dear brothers and sisters, I am happy that in this Himalayan region, we have the fifth ashram. You know we have ashrams in Dehradun, Roorki, Pitoragar, Satkol and no Haldwani yet. Of course, there's a small place in <laughs> Almora, which incidentally I think was the first Himalayan center in the mission created, I think, 40 years ago, something like that. I'm happy to see so many of you here. I frankly did not expect more than 100. And I must also congratulate Brother Chufal and his team for the excellent work they have done here and for the speed with which they have achieved this. Now it is up to all of you to use it for the sole purpose for which we make ourselves spiritual adv advancement. An ashram is a place of rest, of retreat, of introspection and of meditation. So these places are to be used only for this purpose. Our ashrams are never let out for other purposes, no. Of course, we celebrate marriages of our own abhyasis in a very simple, non-ritualistic way. You all know that Sahaj Marg is a departure from the traditional practices of the religion of this land, Hindus. We do not believe in rituals. We do not recommend rituals because rituals have no life. The difference between seeing a tree and seeing the painting of a tree or for a woman to see the picture of a baby and to have a baby in her hand, that is the difference between ritualistic practice and reality. We don't even call Sahaj Marga practice. It is a way of life where meditation at the beginning is something you do in the morning, in the evening and at night before going to bed. But slowly that meditative state must become something natural to you through the waking and sleeping hours, that means 24 hours a day. When that stage is reached, you will find that all your actions conform to, say, divine requirements. We are no more honest, we are no more truthful, we are no more efficient, we are no more educated, we are no more any of these things. We live the divine life in the way that it has to be done and it is a natural thing. See, nowadays in this corrupt world, people say, I am very honest or I never tell a lie, etc., etc., you see. But even in telling the truth, we can tell lies. And when you think of the lie, you know, that is enough, you don't have to tell a lie. Because according to our tradition of yoga, everything begins here and then it comes here and then it comes into this. Manacha, bacha, astabhyam. You know, from the mind to the speech to those uh, karmendriyas as we call them. So, much later only it comes here. It is here that all evil originates, all good also originates. As the Vedas say, the mind alone is responsible for our uplift as well as for our downfall. So Sahaj Marg takes the mind for its, uh, you know, the field of action. The mind, the intellect, you know, this uh, composite which gives us all the thoughts that we have, very essential, that has to be now regulated. And what do we do to regulate it? We use the heart. 
we meditate on the heart, not on the mind. From here, the education spreads out, you see. Slowly the mind becomes subordinate to the heart. This thinks it has no moral values, it has no ethical values. It gives us thoughts. This brings in the morality, the ethics of any situation. Therefore, this is the governor. This is the governed, though it provides all the information. Therefore, Babaji Maharaj said that for two or three reasons we choose to heart for meditation. According to all the great religions of this world, the Lord resides in our heart. Secondly, the, it is from here that the blood circulation starts. So when you purify this and you meditate on this, it is as if this divinized blood flows through our whole system, divinizing the system. Like it carries oxygen to all organs of the body. So these are two very important reasons why we do meditation on the heart. Slowly the divine, you know, the voice of the conscience, as you would like to call it in modern terms, it begins to, you know, weakly, feebly tell us, brother, halt, when we are, you know, taking a doubtful step. If you listen to that, it becomes progressively stronger and stronger until one day you hear nothing but this. From that day you can say, I am working under divine guidance. It has taken over. I am no more in the picture except that it's an instrument of this. The heart uses this whole corporeal system as its vehicle to do the work that has to be done in this world for two reasons. One is for our own personal uh, growth, transcendence, divinization perhaps ultimately if we persist, and the other to help society to become that which my master wants us to become. So this is like a lamp that we hold. The lamp is for you to find your way in the darkness, but it also helps those who follow you. No lamp works for you alone. You may light a candle in your room as a student, but four other students can study by its light. Sahaj Marg is therefore universal in its application. When you grow, others grow who are near you. When you water grass, weeds are also watered. Therefore comes the need for cleaning. That which is not necessary has to be removed. So we have the cleaning, we have the meditation, and because it's a path toward divinization, we need to pray also because we need divine guidance, divine help, divine assistance, and eventually that the divine take us over and say, you are mine. Lord must tell us, you are mine, every one of us. Now we say, God, I am yours. Babuji used to say, my, my master, you know, he used to laugh and say, okay, okay, you are his. But has he accepted you as his? That is the important thing. You may all shout from the rooftops, you know, I am yours, I am yours. I cannot say I belong to the police because Bajpayee is sitting here. He is different, I am different. I have to be taken into it. God has to accept us. It is not enough that we are God's creation. Through such aeons of time, we have become divorced from the divine state. Now we have to struggle back and it is God's mercy, his love, his kindness, his compassion that he has <laughs> taken his residence in the heart and what he cannot do from outside, he is doing from inside. But Babuji Maharaj used to say, we have to listen, we have to obey. Sahaj Marg par excellence is the way of obedience. If you obey, your path is clear. What is it that stands between obedience and non-obedience? Intellect. I know, I know. Why should I do it? 
who is God, where is God, let him show himself before me. How does God know? It's all right, you know, he was in the Treta Yuga and Dwapar Yuga and it was easy those days. But in this world of today, how not to tell lies, how not to cheat, how not to adulterate, how not to fool others. Can God do it? A tiny voice replaced from the heart, of course I can do it, if you let me do it, each one. Eh? You must point to yourself and say, if I permitted God to do it, he would permit to do it. But we don't, you see. We remain subdued in, the, in our human condition, in our misery, in our ill health, in our squalor. Why? Because we appeal to God, we never obey God. We appeal to a master of spirituality, we never obey him. Our conscience appeals to us. Dear fellow, you are doing wrong, but we never obey it. We have three sources of wisdom, three sources of direction, three sources of guidance, three ways in which God can take our hand and lead us on the path. God himself, a guru when God is not directly accessible, and your conscience. All three are the same. There are three, the, the voice, same voice, speaks through three different microphones. Listen. Listen carefully and listen obediently. This is the simplest way of saying what Sahaj Marg is. I do hope all of you will listen to this, follow, you know, implicitly. Discipline means implicit follow. If this meditation is at 6, you must be there at 6. Not say, think I we can do it at any time. You don't miss your lunch, you don't miss your dinner, no? Why do you miss meditation? No, sir, I will do tomorrow. Well, and then what happens next day? Every time you don't do what you have to do, your willpower is weakened and you find it more difficult the next day. You, you want to wake up at 6, you wake up at 6, your will is strengthened. You wake up at 7, your will is weakened. Next day, 7 will become 8. And then your wife will have to throw a bucket of cold water on you to wake you up. And then everything goes wrong. If you cannot start properly the first step of, it, of life every day, which is the morning, you will never do everything, anything properly. The first step is always the most important step. Because the second step comes only after the first step. Like they say, you know, every journey begins on your doorstep. I can sit here and pontificate and say, I will go to New Zealand next year. I will go to Timbuktu, you know. But it's not enough to make decisions. Do you carry the boat? I know people who say, sir, tomorrow I'll come to be initiated into Sahaj Mahas. They never come. Because between now and tomorrow is 24 hours of possible weakness, of possible diversion from the way, and possibly, you know, totally forgetting what it's all about. You know, God is very merciful when he gives us sleep to recuperate our physical system and makes us remember next morning who I am. Remember, I mean, think if you were to forget who you are every time you wake up the next morning, where would you be? The greatest mystery and the greatest uh, grace of God is revealed in the fact that he allows us to be conscious through sleep to continue our journey towards him. So make use of your sleep also, make it a conscious sleep. Don't sleep like a brute or like an animal, you know, snoring away. Sleep consciously. Sleep in the awareness that even though he is there 24 hours, I too must respect that presence and in some way contribute to that union of him and myself. I'm happy this new ashram is at your disposal. Please free to use it. It is free. There is nothing charged. You know, Sahaj Mahal, there is no charges. Nothing for being uh, initiated. Nothing for continuing to give sittings. But don't misuse these facilities. 
misuse also applies to not utilizing anything. You know, suppose I have something, a pen, and I never write. It's a misuse. Misuse is not active misuse alone. It is passive misuse. So, dear friends, dear brothers and sisters, I pray for you all. Babuji Maharaj said, speaking of ashrams, he wants every house of an Abhyasi to be an ashram. An ashram is not a different place, separate place. If you meditate at home systematically, regularly, in the way it is specified, with devotion, with dedication, your house is an ashram. It is meditation that creates an ashram, not an ashram which creates an abhyasi. Remember this. A kitchen is where you cook food. If I cook food here, this becomes my kitchen. So we should not mistake the place for the activity. The activity is what governs the place. If I don't meditate in, a, in an ashram, it is another building constructed by engineers with money. Another building, you see, nothing more than a building. Whereas if you do what you have to do, meditate day after day after day, the whole, you know, structure, the, everything surrounding, it begins to not vibrate, but to release a sort of a vibration, which slowly permeates the atmosphere around you. And then the village becomes divinized, the town becomes divinized, the country becomes divinized, the world becomes divinized. That is how this spreads. And this is what I said, we have a dual duty, one to ourselves, one to our society. Our society is not Hindu or Muslim or this or that. Our society is not Indian or Muslim, Pakistan, this. Our society is humanity. We have no bias, we have no differences. Mankind is one, humanity is one, therefore we are a brotherhood of human beings. We must love each other, honor each other, cherish each other. I pray that it be so. Thank you.